So for that reason, and the many others I have just discussed, that is why Twilight is the greatest film franchise ever made. <sighs> I've been down here a while. You know, I've been so busy making reviews and stuff, I haven't been really paying attention to anything. What's going on in the world? Uh, let's see. Wait, what? What do you mean, virus? Wait, there's, there's a quarantine going on? What? what? What do they mean you stay in your home for two weeks? Like, I've been down here for months, but what happened while I was gone? I mean... Wait, what? Oh, come on! <sighs> well... There's only one logical thing to do in a situation like this. Get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting with boring manager Rob. Rob say code monkey very diligent, but his output stink. His code not functional or elegant. What do code monkey think? Code monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself. Code monkey not say it. Out loud, code monkey not crazy, just proud. Code monkey like Fritos, code monkey like Tao and Mountain Dew. Code monkey very simple man, big warm fuzzy secret heart. Code monkey like you. Code monkey like you. Hey, just so you guys all know, I'm going to be totally spoiling pretty much the entire series as well as the uh, manga when I discuss the ending. Uh, so, spoiler alert. Also, if you do not like violent images, uh, please skip this review. With that out of the way, I don't know, let, let's go. What's new, Dino Dudes? It's me, the Meteor Raptor. I'm bored. Yep, on statement of the century. Uh, trapped here because I can't leave for some reason. Kinda can't really go out anywhere. So I figured, you know what? Let's do some binging. Let's find some good TV shows to watch and just power through them, because really I got nothing else to do. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, Walking Dead. Uh, seen up to season four, kinda lost interest. Breaking Bad, seen the whole thing. Loved it. Better Call Saul, not on Netflix. Not the season series I'm at, so no. Uh, then I remembered I had what I'm reviewing tonight. It's a 2007 TV miniseries called Afro Samurai. Now, some of you might be looking at this and going, Oh, wait, so are you like a guy that watches a lot of anime or something, or what? No, not really. Aside from this, uh, Afro Samurai, Dragon Ball, uh, a little bit of Dragon Ball, not the whole thing, Tokyo Ghoul, Red Line, and some Studio Ghibli films, I really don't have a whole lot of experience with the anime genre because, I don't know, I've just never really sat down and watched a ton of it. But this is fantastic, and I'm going to essentially review the entire series. Because one of my big issues with the series is how short it is. So this is a five episode series. It runs a grand total of 125 minutes. Each episode is roughly half an hour. The sad thing is, there was no sequel, there was no continuation. Yes, there's a movie, which, hey, stay tuned, subscribe, I'm gonna be talking about that real soon. But, for some reason, this never really got the attention it deserved. So what's the story? Well, it's a pretty simple story. 
Essentially, Afro, the dude with the big afro, can't believe I had to say that, watches his father die by after being killed by some weird three-armed dude played by Ron Perlman. No, I'm not joking. So it turns out in this world that there's these two headbands, the number one and number two. If you have number one, you're God, essentially. You rule the world, everything is awesome, the end. The only way you can lose it is if the number two challenges you and kills you. Catch is, anyone can challenge number two. So, Justice is the character's name, actually, the Ron Perlman dude. Uh, he's like a mixture of The Collector and Aaron Black, to be honest. But nowhere, nowhere near as lame as Collector. No offense to any Collector players out there. I think he's a cool idea, but he's wasted. Anyhow, so he's number one, Afro's number two. So the series is essentially him heading towards the mountain where Justice is waiting so he can get revenge. Along the way, we see a lot into his past concerning what happened after his father died to how he was able to take back the number two headband to who trained him. The structure of the story is pretty good, actually. The issue is the same issue I have with stuff like Mad Max Fury Road and the whole has -been Hotel universe. There's so much stuff in there I want to know more about. So much stuff I gotta ask questions about. It's never explained. Maybe that was because they were hoping for more episodes and they just didn't get the chance or something. Or maybe it's just vague because it is the way it is. Because this isn't some, like, show set in, like, 1800s Japan or something. It's this weird, modern, modern, rustic Japan. Like, the footage you're seeing, this is from the show. It's just, it's a really weird but cool design. It's almost like a Japanese steampunk in a way. But as for the plot itself, it is... Pretty basic. There really isn't a lot of twists or turns or anything like that. And ironically, Afro, despite being the main character, there isn't a lot we know about him. He very rarely talks. Like, shockingly, is very quiet throughout the whole show. Uh, we know he's out for revenge. We know he has the number two headband. We know he has his father's sword. But they never really do a whole lot to kind of show more of his personality, but I think that was completely intentional. See, there's also this character. Yo, 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 Afro! That was off the chain! Cold-blooded! Damn, my brother! Excuse me for probing, but what you just did back there, was it absolutely necessary? I I'm beginning to wonder if you got any feeling for human life left in you at all! This is Ninja Ninja. This, to some people, is either the best part or the worst part of the show. I am in the former. I think he's hilarious. Essentially, he's believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. Again, that's not really explained in the show, because it looks like he's Afro's imaginary friend, and then something happens later on that disproves that, and then in the manga, apparently, no, he is real, but only if you have the number two headband can you see him. And then the creators came out and said, yeah, no, he's technically just in Afro's imagination. It makes no sense. But he's kind of there to act as the other emotions, because Afro has completely shut out emotionally everything. In fact, it's a really interesting story because it very much is a revenge story that shows the futility of it. I'm going into spoilers now, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, jump to this time and I'll talk about the rest of the stuff. Also, I'm going to be spoiling the manga, so just be warned. So after fighting through, you know, Robot Afro, uh, tons of different uh, villains, all sorts of mobs, people with giant crossbows, people with rocket launchers, he finally meets with Justice. And essentially, Justice now has, like, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of these headbands. He says if he collects all of them, he can essentially give the world the peace it needs. That if he becomes the ultimate ruler, then he will become... Essentially, he'll be a good guy, actually. Afro kills him, takes, and then just kind of heads off and doesn't really do much. Like, maybe the movie explains it, but he just sort of seems to disappear. Here's the thing, though. While I really like the final fight, it's really well animated, it can be said for the whole thing, the manga did this so much better by not doing it. See, in the manga, from the little bits I've read, because that thing's like $200 to find nowadays, uh... He gets up to where Justice was, 
Justice is dead. He died apparently of old age or something, waiting for Afro, and in the end, all the bloodshed, all the murder, all the people he let die, it's worthless. There really is nothing. His revenge is pointless. His whole quest, it doesn't matter. Nothing he did matters now. He can't avenge his dad. He can't even take the victory of stopping justice from taking over the world. To me, that's a really compelling ending, and a really awesome one at that. The fact that they didn't use that is kind of disappointing, but I also get, considering how much violence there is in this show, <laughs> that maybe they wanted to have a final fight or something. But it kind of ends with, in a similar way in a sense, with Afro just kind of leaving and not really becoming the new number one. It's, it's weird. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it. And I don't want to spoil everything because there is still stuff you need to watch. Okay? Welcome back, everyone. So across all five episodes, Afro is pretty quiet. Ninja Ninja is pretty funny. But there's still some surprisingly good emotional moments. Especially with young Afro. There's a number of scenes that really kind of get across that Afro is broken. Now, if you think you're going to go into some whole tangent about how it's a character study and a deconstruction of the whole idea of how revenge will destroy your life, no, it isn't. It isn't, unless you watch that part I was just talking about, but that's only the ending, and I'm not going to go into it again. What this show is, is entertainment. It knows it's a show called Afro Samurai. It has some of the, some of my favorite fight scenes I've ever seen, some of the, uh, Weirdest animation I've ever seen, some of the best sword play, some of the best fights. What I mean by weird animation is a lot of the characters have very odd designs, and they move in very bizarre movements. I feel like that's meant to, meant to be like that because that way it's kind of hard to tell if anyone's normal or not and kind of showing how crazy this world is. For the most part, I think they actually did a pretty good job. But really, when it comes down to it, the most important part, the fight scenes, are amazing. So, I think really at the end of the day, the writing is the show's biggest fault. But it's also one of its strongest points. Like, it, it's weird. The writing issues I have are very minor and minute, mainly concerning the ending and the world building. And just some unanswered questions, which I think, again, maybe they were trying to open up for a sequel, but didn't happen. Let's talk about the acting. The acting is awesome. First of all, Justice is played by Ron Perlman. I love Ron Perlman. I've met him, he's a great dude, great actor. Everything I've ever seen him in, he was great in. Including that one weird movie when he was a furry. I think it was like To Catch Bigfoot or something. I don't know, but I'm not making that up. Loved him in Hellboy. He is just a crazy, creepy, twisted dude in this movie. I love when they let Ron Perlman play villains because he has such a just twisted tone in the way he portrays them often that it really makes it creeped out but also kind of enthralled and wanting to see more of him. And at the end, when he does his big villain speech, not much of a spoiler, you really should have seen that coming, he knocks it out of the park, especially because, kind of a spoiler here, he has a point. That's all I'm going to say, though. Now, the main star of the show is Samuel L. Jackson. He plays both main characters. And believe me, I could not tell right away that Afro was Samuel L. Jackson. The very few lines he has when he's an adult are so deep, so off of what Samuel L. Jackson tends to play. It's like someone took his Mace Windu performance and dropped it down a couple levels. It sounds awesome. And he also plays Ninja Ninja, so essentially he has to be talking to himself back and forth. And he brings a great amount of energy in with Ninja Ninja. It's honestly just... Any scene he's in I really enjoy because the dude is just funny. And Sam L. Jackson brings this bizarre, literally cartoonish energy to it. So, massive thumbs up from me. The animation... Like I talked about, the animation's weird. Uh, that's all I can really say, though. The animation, 90% of the time, fantastic. And the other 10%... I think it's more of a stylistic choice, and I'm not entirely sure what they were going for, so perhaps it's just me, but... I feel like some of the animation could have been touched up a little bit, 
Especially because this thing was, uh, I believe it was made by, I don't know, Samurai Project. I don't, I don't know the company that made it. But I feel like there could have been a few touch-ups here or there. But still, not going to complain. Animation's pretty good. Music. This is my one genuine gripe with this show. The music's fantastic, don't get me wrong. The music is great. A number of scenes, though, they use iMovie sound effects. Yeah, I, I'm not making that up. Like, a number of dramatic stingers or stuff like that are directly taken from iMovie. Okay, maybe they didn't have a huge library to work with and they grabbed that and didn't realize where it was from. I don't know. But it just takes you right out when the rest of the music is done by, the, like, a member of the Wu-Tang Clan and stuff like that and all these other great Japanese hip-hop blends. It's awesome. So the fact that every now and then a random sound effect is just taken out from iMovie kind of drags you out for a second. But at the end of the day, highly recommended. Three and a half Raptor Claws out of four, this is a show that is definitely worth binging. I'm really sad that in 13 years, it really doesn't seem to have that big of a fan base. It got into an episode of Death Battle. In fact, that's where I first learned about this show was from the Death Battle episode with Afro and Samurai Jack. But it's clear there are people that really like the show, but it just sort of dropped off the map. Now, who knows? Maybe someday Sam L. Jackson will come back and reprise this role, or maybe they'll get someone new. Maybe there'll be a new series, a new movie, a new video game. Actually, does anyone know if the games were any good? I never got a chance to play them. I don't know. What I do know is that for the five episodes it was around, this was awesome. Afro Samurai is a unique, fun, entertaining, action-packed, blood-soaked thrill ride of just the kind of animation that you just kind of kick your feet back, put up the recliner uh, seat thing or whatever, lean back, grab a drink, grab a snack, and binge. And believe me, since we're all trapped inside for whoever knows how long, I feel like we're going to be doing a lot more of that these days. So if you get a chance, watch this. I believe it's on YouTube, but I'd pref I would recommend you buy it because, hey, who knows, maybe if like a bunch of people suddenly start talking about it, it'll get brought back or something or re-released. I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Media Raptor Reviews. While you're here, please remember to like and subscribe. I hate having to ask you guys to do that because I don't do this for a living. It's just... Everyone else is doing it, so why not? I don't know. But anyhow, what I do want you guys to do is to remember that until next time, keep cool, and I'll see all you dino dudes around. Later.